Tsunamis are a terrifying and devastating form of natural disaster that we may be seeing more of due to global warming. So just how big can these monster waves really get? Let's find out. But first, be sure to hit the red subscribe button and turn on your notifications for the latest from the richest. A tsunami is much bigger than the waves you're used to seeing at the beach. Most of these mammoth waves form as a result of underwater earthquakes, landslides, or volcanic eruptions. Many people believe that a tsunami is a single massive wave, but they're actually comprised of a series of waves known as a wave train. These waves race across the ocean at speeds of up to 500 miles per hour, or about as fast as a commercial jet. The strange meteorological event known as a tsunami cloud is often larger and more imposing looking than most water tsunamis. Yet the most powerful parts of a tsunami aren't always above water either. Even waves that are under a foot tall on the surface can be traveling with tremendous power underwater. In fact, the vast majority of tsunamis never rise above 10 feet high and are slowed down by geological features such as coral reefs and other underwater formations. People fortunate enough to survive such an event often compare the sound of an incoming tsunami to that of a freight train. They are brutally powerful and tear away anything in their paths. And just because you make it past the first wave doesn't mean that you're safe. The first wave is rarely the most powerful, and since tsunamis move so quickly, it's almost impossible to outrun them unless you are quick to notice the warning signs. In addition to hearing the roar of the wave, you might experience the ground shaking and notice a rapid rise and fall of water levels. Tsunamis form because of water displacement, and how large they are depends on the strength of the blast and the distance the water has to travel. In 2004, the Indian Ocean tsunami was generated by a 9.1 magnitude earthquake. That's a greater force than every single explosive used in World War II combined. The resulting earthquake grew to be 98 feet high, which is roughly the same height as 17 grown adults standing on top of one another. It was the most devastating tsunami in human history, but perhaps, shockingly, it wasn't the largest. The Japanese tsunami that hit in 2011 was from an earthquake similar in size, but this wave reached 133 feet in the air. That's slightly shorter than the Statue of Liberty. And even that wasn't great enough to qualify it as a mega tsunami. When a tsunami is formed by material falling into the water, the waves generally reach much more massive heights. Italy experienced an event in 1963 known as the Vigeant Dam Disaster. A massive landslide into a reservoir caused an 820-foot wave. That's the same height as the Mosh Avir Solar Tower in Israel. Alaska experienced an even larger tsunami in 1958 when a landslide sent a 1,722-foot-tall wave barreling towards shore. That's a tsunami that is even taller than the Empire State Building. We missed witnessing an even larger tsunami by about 1.5 million years when one crashed into the Hawaiian island of Molokai. It rose 1,968 feet into the sky, completely submerging the island. But we know that you all want to know what is the absolute biggest tsunami to ever occur on Earth. For that, we'll have to travel back in time about 3.5 billion years. Scientists have found evidence that a massive asteroid struck the planet and was immediately vaporized by the impact. The resulting wave would have traveled around the Earth, not just once, but over and over again. It would have torn a path of destruction evaporating about 300 feet of water from the ocean, dramatically eroding continental landmasses and changing the faces of our coastlines forever. Only the very highest of mountaintops would have remained untouched. This period of time was known as the Late Heavy Bombardment, and asteroids hitting the Earth, Moon, and likely other planets were pretty common. It's thought that the gas giants migrating caused disruption to the gravity of the asteroid belt and Kuiper belt, sending asteroids hurtling towards us. Thankfully, that period of time has long since ended, and most tsunamis nowadays aren't related to asteroids crashing into the ocean. Since it's likely that only deep ocean bacteria would have survived such an event, that's definitely a good thing. Who would have guessed that having massive asteroids crashing into the planet isn't good for it? Hopefully it's at least another few billion years before something so catastrophic happens again.
The Empire State Building in New York City is 1,250 feet tall, or 1,454 feet from bottom to tip if you want to get specific. Standing atop this skyscraper can be dizzying, but when you're not worried about falling over yourself, you might wonder what it would be like to drop something off the edge. We'll explore what would happen if you were to take a simple penny and drop it off the edge of the Empire State Building. When you were a kid, you likely heard all sorts of urban legends presented as fact that you accepted without questioning. One popular legend is that if you were to drop a penny off the top of the Empire State Building, it would spell disaster for anyone unlucky enough to have it fall on them. Depending on when it was minted, pennies weigh either 2.5 or 3.11 grams, so it would have to gather a ton of speed in order to do any damage. Heights are pretty scary to most people, so is it possible that a common fear plus a small piece of currency could spell disaster? You might think that a fall from great heights is pretty straightforward, but there is a lot going on that affects how you land. For example, if your elevator broke and you plunged 60 stories, there's actually a pretty good chance you'd escape with your life. Because elevators fit snugly in their shafts, an air cushion would be created, slowing your descent and likely saving your life. When a penny falls, it doesn't stay in position, but rather it flips and tumbles, which helps to slow it down and prevents it from picking up a lethal amount of speed. A penny dropped from the top of the Empire State Building would probably max out at about 100 miles per hour, and only if the conditions were perfect. To put that into perspective, a gun fired bullets at 10 times that speed, about 1,000 miles per hour. When measuring projectiles or ballistics, we use a measurement of energy known as foot-pounds. This is the amount of torque created by one pound of force acting at a perpendicular distance to one foot from a pivot point. Chucking a penny off the Empire State Building and hitting some unlucky passerby would expose them to less than one foot-pound of energy, which definitely isn't enough to do any serious damage. It would hurt less than a paper cut and a little more than catching your pinky toe on the edge of a coffee table. We're sorry to say that the penny wouldn't level a city block or create a massive impact crater on the street where it fell. It would just sting and annoy whatever unlucky person was walking underneath where it fell. But that's a single penny we are talking about. What if you drop an entire roll of them? You can fit 50 pennies in a single roll, meaning that it would have a weight of about 50 grams. By multiplying the weight of the original penny by 50, you've created a much more forceful object that is now hurtling towards the ground. Depending on wind resistance, this pack of pennies could reach a velocity of about 250 miles per hour. Unlike a lone penny, this roll of change could do some serious damage if it were to hit somebody. It would have approximately 1,000 foot-pounds, which is a thousand times more than that lone penny. What does that mean for whoever it falls on? If it hit them on the head, they would be fine, as long as they happen to be wearing a hard hat. If they're not, the outlook is not nearly so good, and such a blow delivered to the head is one that a human wouldn't be able to walk away from. No matter how hard you throw a single penny, it isn't going to do any damage to anyone it happens to hit because it's just not aerodynamically stable. However, multiplying the weight of the penny by 50 means that it's not going to flip around and will reach much greater speeds and hit with a more forceful impact. Even changing the shape of an object to make it more aerodynamic helps it do more damage once it reaches the ground. For example, a ballpoint pen dropped off of the Empire State Building could pierce a human being like an arrow, causing serious damage. So we don't have to go around wearing hard hats all the time. Let's all agree not to hurl objects off the Empire State Building. You know, just in case. Whether or not you believe in global warming and the role humans play in changing our planet's temperature, there is no denying that Earth's ice caps are melting. No, we don't need to worry about waking up tomorrow to find all the ice gone, but if the current trend continues, one day in the future, all of the polar and glacial ice will be melted. Unsurprisingly, should this day come, the world will look much different than it does today. Water levels will be higher, millions of people will be displaced, and polar bears will no longer have a habitat to call home. Pack your water wings and join us as we show you just how different things would be if all the world's ice melted. You all know that for the last several years, the debate on global warming has really started to heat up. No matter what side of the debate you're on, what is universally accepted is that the Earth's temperatures are on the rise. Now, if you happen to live in one of the planet's colder regions, you might be inclined to greet weather that's a few degrees warmer with a positive attitude. After all, anytime you can wear shorts and sandals is a good time. 
right? Yet even a bump of a few degrees can spell disaster for us in the long run. This is bad news considering research is showing that global temperatures have been steadily going up year by year. In fact, since humans started keeping official records in 1880, 16 of the 17 hottest years on record have occurred since 2001. That's bad news if you love skiing, skating outdoors, or ice fishing. You see, all of this increased temperature means the planet's ice is melting. If it continues, lack of skiing will be the least of our problems. Experts from such organizations as NASA and National Geographic have spent a lot of time studying the amount of ice all over the planet. Up in the mountains, covering lakes or stored in the polar regions, there is said to be 5 million cubic miles of ice. Yes, that's a lot of ice, but disturbingly, it's melting at an alarming rate. In just the past few decades, the Arctic alone has seen roughly 100 cubic miles melt away. Sure, at the current rate, the Earth's ice can last thousands of years, but if temperatures keep inching up, the rate of melting will increase. If you're thinking, so what? Let us explain why having a lot of ice is a good thing. First, there's the role it plays in keeping our planet's temperatures in check. Yes, ice is cold. But in this instance, we're more concerned about the reflective properties. You see, we are continually bombarded by the sun. And while we love that shiny golden orb in the sky, its rays can be harmful in more than one way. When the sun's rays hit the ground, they're absorbed and release heat. When they hit water, 95% is absorbed and a small fraction is reflected. The glaciers and ice caps however, balance all this out by reflecting around 80% of the sun's rays. This actually helps ensure that the planet doesn't get warmed up too fast. As you can imagine, if we decrease the amount of ice covering the Earth, there is less reflective surface and more absorption, which leads to increased temperatures. Okay, so maybe the science and fancy numbers don't interest you, but what about how this will physically change the world around us? For instance, the rise in temperatures is already affecting the mountain ranges around the world. In the Alps, for instance, temperatures are not only melting the ice, but thawing the ground. The result of all of this is that the number of rock falls and landslides is on the rise, with rather dangerous consequences to climbers, hikers, skiers, and anyone living at the foot of the mountains. Towns have had to start building barriers to keep rocks and ice from hitting them, and it's only going to get worse. Of course, from the highest peaks of the mountains, we must travel to the lowest points of Earth to see some of the really terrible consequences of all this melting ice. Currently, melting ice is contributing to a rise in sea levels of around one eighth of an inch per year. Over the last 20 years, levels have gone up 2.6 inches. This is worrisome since eight of the world's 10 largest cities are coastal, and in the U.S. alone, 40% of the population lives along the coast. Now, you might be thinking, 2.6 inches isn't a lot, but consider the amount of flooding experienced in coastal areas in the past decade. The thought of that increasing exponentially over the coming years is terrifying. Worse yet, if that 5 million cubic miles of ice fully melts, experts say that the ocean will rise 216 feet over current levels. That's definitely more jaw-dropping than a couple inches. With such a massive rise in sea levels, the result would be devastating. Brazil, for instance, would lose much of its coastline, and the flooding inland from the Amazonian basin would be significant. Africa's west coast and cities near the mouth of the Nile River would simply vanish under the waves. In Europe, Holland and Denmark would cease to exist, and anyone in London, England, would have to find a new home for sure. Countless millions in Asia would become refugees as large swaths of India, Bangladesh, and China would be covered in water. Down under four out of five Australians would have to relocate as the populated coast would simply simply vanish. Then there's North America. In a nutshell, the eastern seaboard would vanish, and along with it, all of Florida. Houston and New Orleans, in the news recently for flooding, would simply be swallowed by the sea, while San Francisco would become a cluster of islands thanks to its present-day hills. New York's high-rises would still be there for all to see, but in a spooky, apocalyptic scene. They would rise up out of the water as a reminder of a once great city. And the Statue of Liberty? Well, she'd still be there, literally waist-deep in water. So how would the Earth change if all the ice melted? As we've shown you, several bad things would happen to our planet. With less ice to reflect the sun's rays, the Earth would heat up faster than normal. If the ice on the mountains melts too much, landslides and rock falls increase in number. Yet most dramatically, the melting of all the ice will result in a large rise in sea levels, which will cover the coasts of the world in water and force hundreds of millions, if not billions of people, to move. That doesn't sound like fun at all. After you got done wondering how anyone could possibly believe the world isn't round, you probably wondered what would happen if the world was actually flat. Well, wonder no more, because we'll explain what a strange and different place the world would be if it was flat instead of spherical. Gravity. No, we aren't talking about the Sandra Bullock vehicle here. We know how gravity behaves on a round planet, but things would be remarkably different if the Earth was flat. 
Gravity likes to pull things toward the center of the Earth, so everyone on this sphere experiences gravity pretty much the same since we're being pulled towards a common core. However, if the planet was flat, gravity would affect you differently depending on how close to the edge of the planet you were. Even if the Earth was flat, you wouldn't have to worry about tumbling off the side because gravity simply wouldn't allow that to happen. As you neared the edge of the planet, gravity would weigh you down as it pulled you to the central point of the planet. So clearly, if we assume the Earth is flat, that means that everything we think we know about gravity is incorrect. The fact that we are alive, our planet is functioning, and we aren't all floating away into space shows that either the planet is spherical and functions the way we think it does, or it's flat and we've got gravity all wrong. Flip in the switch. Okay, so what would happen if the Earth suddenly turned flat? In addition to having to redo all of our maps and globes, we would be in a heap of trouble, to put it mildly. On our spherical planet, heat and radioactivity can be concentrated in the core of the Earth, safely away from us humans, who live on the crust. However, if the Earth was suddenly to get squished flat, well, that heat and radioactivity has to go somewhere, and that would likely be a lot closer to the surface, which would be bad news. Not to mention that to force the Earth to become flat and remain that way, you have to flip the giant anti-gravity switch. That would have the teeny tiny side effect of ripping away our atmosphere and then causing all of us to go hurtling into space. This sudden flattening would also do a number on the surface of the planet itself, causing enormous rifts and edges to form and making the landscape look nothing like it does now. Just think of how the peel of an orange looks before you start tearing into it and compare that to what it looks like once you're done removing it from the fruit. Plate tectonics. So assuming a flat Earth, clearly the world always has been and always will be flat. That means that in addition to being all wrong about gravity, we have a lot to learn about plate tectonics. Right now, we believe that plates in the mantle of the planet shift, moving the continents about 1.2 inches per year, which is about how fast your hair and fingernails grow. We track this using satellite imaging and various sensory equipment, but somehow we've clearly got this all wrong. A flat Earth would be stationary, and we wouldn't see new mountains like the Rockies forming on land or witness trenches forming in the ocean. Oh, and you know how we mentioned all of that heat and radioactivity being closer to the surface of a flat Earth? That means that we would see an increase in volcanoes and heat on the surface. This would likely be so extreme that the water in the oceans might simply boil away, which isn't exactly conducive to happy and healthy lives, for living beings on the planet. Horizon. Gazing into the ocean and watching ships slowly appear over the horizon can be a beautiful sight, but it's something that wouldn't happen if the Earth was flat. Surprisingly, your day-to-day -day life wouldn't look that different if the Earth was flat because the curvature of the Earth is something that we can't discern, not because it's flat, but because it's so huge. Just gazing at a normal landscape from sea level wouldn't look too different, especially with all of the buildings, hills, and clouds in our way but up in the sky, it's a different story. Fly 35,000 feet in the air with a wide, cloud-free view of the horizon and you'll see the slight curvature of our round planet. If the world was flat, you could just stand on a beach and see ships appear without part of them being obscured by the curvature of the planet until they get closer. Interestingly enough, if we really could see out endlessly on a clear day without our view being obscured, it wouldn't necessarily mean that the world was flat. It could also mean that the planet has grown so enormous that the curvature is even more imperceptible from the planet's surface. Seasons You probably know that on a round planet, the seasons are caused by the tilt of our rotational axis away or towards the sun as we orbit around it. But if the planet was flat, there would be no tilt, and thus no change to the amount of incoming sunlight. The weather would be the same no matter where you were on the planet, not to mention that there would be no more North Pole or South Pole, each with freezing cold weather nor would there be an equator with hot weather. The only way you'd get to see snow on a flat Earth would be if you traveled to the highest possible mountains. You'd also say goodbye to hurricanes, tornadoes, and other extreme weather conditions because there would be no spinning motion to drive storm systems. To get a bit of rain, air needs to rise so that the moisture in it can cool and condense. On a flat Earth, this would only happen in the afternoon when the sun hitting land areas creates a sea breeze moving inland. Overall, the weather on the planet as a whole would be pretty much like the weather in the Middle East now, and there would be a lot of out-of-work meteorologists. The flattening. If the shape of our planet was flat, it would only be a matter of time before the entire surface was as well. Plate tectonics are what help mountains keep growing upwards instead of just eroding away. If we don't have plate tectonics, there is going to be a huge amount of eroding material in time. That means we could see the Grand Canyon filled up with material until it's just another flat expanse. That would be pretty huge for people who live in mountainous areas, or just people who are fans of skiing. 
The silver lining would be that because there are no more shifting plate tectonics, there would also be no more earthquakes. But that seems like a consolation prize at this point. You can also forget about seeing a beautiful mountain sunrise, because the transition from day to night would be quite abrupt. The Moon Not only would the way we see our beloved planet change if the Earth was flat, but the Moon would look quite different as well. Even though the Moon appears to have different phases when we look at it from Earth, the Moon itself isn't changing. What we see is the shadow of the Earth on the face of the Moon, and you'll notice that it's definitely a curved shadow that we can see. We also only see one side of the Moon, with only minor changes in viewing angle. But if the Earth was flat, we would be able to see different sides of the Moon depending on where we stood on the planet. Someone in Quebec, Canada, would see the front of a nearly full Moon, while someone standing in Chile would see the dark backside of the same Moon. Not to mention that if the Earth was flat, it's likely the Moon would be as well because of whatever new gravity rules that make flat planets possible. In fact, all of the cosmic gas, dust, and rocks that make up the planets in our solar system would arrange into disks rather than spherical patterns, meaning that we wouldn't be the only flat planet. Wait, it's easy to get so focused on what that number on the scale is that we completely forget what it represents. What our bathroom scale is measuring when we step onto it is your gravitational pull. Your weight changes depending on how strong a planet's gravity is. For example, if you weigh 200 pounds here, you'd only weigh 33 pounds on the Moon. However, if you traveled to Jupiter, you would weigh 473 pounds. On a round planet, you'll weigh the same no matter where you stand, since gravity is always pulling you towards the center of the planet. Two people who weigh exactly the same while standing next to each other could have completely different weights when standing on different places in a flat world. Space Travel if the planet has really been flat forever, that would have serious implications for our lives. For one thing, that means that all space travel, those satellites in orbit and the moon landing, all of that was completely faked. Why would NASA and other agencies do all of this to promote some sort of round Earth conspiracy? We know that the space race in which different countries tried to land on the moon first was a big deal. So is this really all some sort of battle for supremacy where everyone knows that they're all faking it, but don't want to admit it? This would mean that our governments, and even our scientists, aren't to be trusted. Not to mention, we would have to deal with how smug all of those moon landing hoaxers would be about the whole thing. That might be even worse than all of the giant volcanoes that would happen to be on a flat planet. So much of our scientific knowledge is based on the idea of gravity functioning the way that we think it does, that we would have to reevaluate pretty much our entire body of scientific knowledge. The societal and scientific ramifications of this discovery would be enormous. Night Sky People have known that the Earth was round for an extremely long time. Way back in Aristotle's time, from 384 to 322 BCE, he noticed that different constellations were seen depending on your distance from the equator and concluded that this meant we were standing on a round planet. On a flat planet, we would be stuck gazing upwards at a constant and unchanging star pattern. It would be geometrically impossible to see two different star patterns rotating around the poles the way that we do now. Over a 24-hour period, every human being on the planet would see the exact same stars if the Earth was flat. Because Earth isn't a flat disk, it occasionally blocks our view of the night sky, obscuring certain stars at certain times. Not to mention that we have actually been in space and been able to take images of a round Earth. Sure, it could actually be a disk, but that would only be true if we had only taken a few photos of the planet from one specific angle, which just isn't the case. Either it's that massive and far-reaching conspiracy we mentioned, or we just have to admit that we live on a round planet. Have we managed to convince you that the world is round, or are you planning to pack your level the next time you board a plane? Hopefully, you've come around and have decided to embrace our wonderfully spherical planet. Before you head out to see some ships coming over the horizon, don't forget to like our video and subscribe to The Richest for more. And before you go, don't forget to check out all of the new and exciting content over at The Richest Espanol. Adios.